my brothers, my sisters and brothers in Christ, it is truly a day that the Lord has made we rejoice and be glad in it. We just thank the Lord on this morning, thank you for allowing us to, to be here. It is truly a blessing. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. First, I want to give honors to my Father in heaven, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the precious Holy Spirit who leads and guides us. This morning, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 5 through 17. Listen to what the Word of God says. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayers were made without ceasing of the church unto the, to God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains before the door, kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And when he went out and followed him, he wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought that he had saw a vision. When he thought he was, when they, they passed the first and the second ward, they came to the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened up to them on its own accord. And they went out and passed through the streets, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord that has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when, and when he considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many was gathered praying. And Peter knocked at the door of the gate, and a damsel came to the hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran and told how Peter stood before the gate. And, and they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter was knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he begged to hold their peace and declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, Go show these signs unto James and the brethren. And he departed. And, and went to his own place. The word of God is already blessed. People of God, I want to speak this morning from the subject, you ain't seen nothing yet. Let us, let us pray. Oh, gracious, blessed Father, Lord, we thank you for every opportunity that you have before your presence, oh God. Father God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for the voice that you have given us to speak your word. Father God, I speak a blessing over all your people who are, are listening and watching right now, Lord God. Whatever they may be going through, oh God, we ask that the day that it come to an end, oh God. Father, I ask that you use your servant, oh God, to bless your holy name, to glorify you and your kingdom. Father, we ask these many things in Jesus' name. Amen. You ain't seen nothing yet. Have you ever seen something, but your mind wouldn't let you process it? But yet and still, you know you saw what you saw. In other words, I know I saw something, but my mind won't allow me to accept it. Amen. Now, the, the world is full of calamity and chaos. People are waiting for the world to return back to normal. But March of 2020, the world changed as we knew it. It took a turn. For the worst. People of God, did you ever think that one day that you wouldn't be able to attend Sunday services? Did you ever think that you would be forced to, to do Bible studies online? 
Did you ever think that the preacher would be preaching to empty pews without a congregation? Did you ever think that you would have to wear masks in public places? Did you ever think that you would have to stay six feet from the people you love and, and all those who are around you? Did you ever think that the schools would temporarily close their doors? Amen. See, Jesus warned us of these things that will take place, but he encouraged us not to fear. He talks about the wars and rumors of wars, the nations rising against nations, kingdom against kingdom, the famines, meaning the lack of food and pestilence, the deadly diseases that will plague the earth, amen, and the earthquake in diverse places. See, these things must happen, but the end is not yet. When you think about a, a woman when she is with child, she starts to experience small pains, which is, is called contractions. But as time goes on, those contractions get stronger. See, the closer uh, she gets to her due date, the more pain she will feel. So people of God, I come today to tell you that, that, that Christ is the same way. The closer Christ come uh, to return, oh, amen, we will experience. If you are waiting for this, this world to return back to normal, you are deceiving yourself. Luke 28, 21 says, when you see these signs begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your head, rejoice because your redemption draws nigh. See, not only should you look up and notice the signs, but you should receive them with joy because all your suffering is about to come to an end. Amen. See, I don't care about what's going on in my life. I don't care around me, but I receive everything with joy because the Bible told me so. Amen. See, as I look around today, it reminds me of a, a runaway train with no brakes. This world seems to be spiraling out of control, but, it, but if, you, if you believe in your local government, I want to tell you today that your heart will be broken because the only way any one of us will survive if we lean not to our own understanding, but trust in the true and living God. Amen. So our main focus shouldn't be what we see, but focus on what we can't see. Second Corinthians 4.18 says we shouldn't uh, model, look at the things that we sit that we can see because they are only things that are temporal, but, but the things that we can't see are, are eternal. So the Lord encouraged us to, to focus on the things that we cannot see, which is the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Because the people who don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, they have to see it before they believe it. But uh, I, I, there's nothing wrong with uh, wanting to see the facts. But as a born-again believer, it, it, it will be some things that you don't see, but you still have to believe. Amen? Amen. See, the Bible says that Jesus turned water into wine and that he fed the multitude with five loaves and two fish and he blessed it. I didn't see it, but I believe it because the Bible says so. Amen. Amen. Yes. See, just like the doctor said that I have no chance, but I know my God is a healer. I, I know I've been struggling with sin, but I know my God is a, a deliverer. Yes. See, see, I know that I, I've been sentenced to 20 years, but I've been set free. Amen. I, I know that my table has no food on it, but I know he's a provider. Yes. See, I don't know about you. If I look at my bank account and it says zero balance, I know my God is a way maker. Yes. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and his glory. Even though I can't see it, I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he will. Amen. Amen. Somebody tell you you ain't seen nothing yet. People of God, ever since this pandemic has introduced itself to, to society, it has wrecked families. The abuse rate has went up. But not only that, the suicide rate it is at an all time high because people can't cope with the new way of living. Social distancing has also played a part in this pandemic. As a matter of fact, this may be the biggest thing in this pandemic because we are social beings and more people are turning to alcohol and, and it has created more times in the lives of, of many people, but they use it 
to glorify themselves instead of glorifying God. So they waste their time that they have been uh, granted. They tell us that the economy is doing better. But how can this be when everyday jobs are being lost and people being laid off and stores and restaurants are closing their doors? Amen. Amen. Some people are in need of healings. Some are struggling in their finances. Many uh, marriages are in trouble. Some feel like they're all alone. But I came today to tell somebody that is truly a blessing to serve the God that we serve. Because the God that we serve is not dead. Yes. See, see, you ain't seen what God is about to do in your life. Can I tell you that don't give up on that dream. Don't give up on that relationship. Don't give up on life. First Corinthians 2, 9 says, I hadn't seen and the ear hadn't heard what entered into the hearts of man for those things that God loved for those who prepared him. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, I, I go to prepare a place for you. Tell somebody you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. People of God, God is up to something. Even though we are in the midst of a pandemic, I believe restoration is on the horizon. God is restoring some things. He's restoring prayer lives. He's restoring uh, health. He's restoring relationships, not just earthly relationships, but, but relationships by uh, the heavenly relationships. Oh, yes, God is bringing them out. Amen. God is using the earthquake to warn his people to come out and, and, and to wake up. The quaking is because of all the wickedness and the sin that's in the land. But this is why we serve a good God. Because one, it comes before destruction. Proverbs 16 says, the pride go before destruction and a hearty spirit before a fall. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I don't know the time of my return, but I will show you signs. We have to be able to see and notice the signs that are being displayed and right in front of our eyes. See, everything is not all bad, but it's not all good either. He said that there will be trials and tribulations in this life. Uh, John 10, 10 says it, it better. He said, but this thief cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Somebody ought to be shouting hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the only way you will receive life is through Jesus Christ. See, I don't care how much you, you, people may love you and how much they, how good they treat you and, and how good they talk about you, but your peace is in Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Somebody type, you ain't seen nothing yet. This morning, my brothers and sisters, this text focus on King Herod and how he sought to kill certain members of the church. And he, he saw that it pleased the Jews and he proceeded to take Peter and throw uh, him in prison and bring him before the people uh, at Passover. But the Bible says that prayers were made without ceasing of the church unto God for, for Peter. Amen. People of God, there's three things you will see happen when you pray on one accord. Number one, God will show up. Jeremiah 33 3 says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And see, and the church began to call on the name of the Lord and he showed up. Seven and then Amplified says, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared beside him and a light shined in the cell. And the angel struck Peter on the side saying, awaken, awaken, get up quickly. Verse eight, the angel said to him, prepare yourself, strap on your sandals and, and, and get ready for whatever may happen. The angel also told him to, to, to put on your robe, saints of God. God is saying, strap on your seatbelt. The ride is about to get rough. Prepare your hearts and your mind. Keep your garments clean. Amen. Yes. But if you if you keep your mind on me, I will keep you in perfect peace. Yes. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a witness. Number two, you will witness the power of God. I believe we are in a time where God is about to release more of his power. I believe we are about to see miracle signs and wonders that, that, that the Bible talked about. Amen. You see, if you don't believe in the miracle signs and wonders, then you don't believe in the word of God. John 14, 12 said that he that believeth on me and, and the work that, that I do, he shall do also even greater because I go to the father. See, those who seek out the signs and those who want to see the blind eyes open and those who want to see the lame walk. Mark 16 told that the signs shall follow them that believe and in my name. Jesus said, in my name, 
Let's just cast out devils and speak with new tongues. Amen? Amen. See, when God sent his angels, the Bible says that Peter didn't realize what was being done, but he thought that he had a vision. Peter said, I know now for a sure that it was the Lord that sent his angels to deliver me. See, we, we, we have to take the limits off of God because the Bible said that we, we, we can do, uh, nothing is that nothing is impossible with God. So take the limits off. Stop putting them in a box. Amen. Amen. See, if you have faith to believe it, God have the power to do it. And, and number three, your prayers will get answered. People of God, God hears the prayers of his people. It's something about when you, you come together and, and pray. The Bible tells us to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We all know that the pandemic got us where we have to be separated. But how many know that there's no spirit, no distance in God's spirit? He designed our families and marriages and he designed the church and he intended for them to call to pray. Because he knows there's strength in numbers. Matthew 12, 25 said, Every kingdom divided against is, is brought to desolate, and every city or house that divides against itself, it shall not stand. Amen. See, although they came together to pray on Peter's behalf when he showed up to tell them how the Lord had delivered them, they were still in disbelief. Although they had been praying all night long, calling uh, out to the name of the Lord, making pet petition known unto the Lord, they still uh, couldn't believe that what they were seeing. Amen. But people of God, if we be honest with ourselves, when we pray, sometimes we uh to do what he say. Sometimes we don't believe that God is capable of doing what he said he would do. Amen. Amen. But I know, I don't know about you, but I believe that prayer changes things. I believe when I pray, he hears me just because I can't see it, regardless of my outcome. I know he's still working on my behalf. Yes. James 5, 16 said, confess thou false one to another for pray ye for one another that ye may be healed. The affectionate and fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Somebody type, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Brothers and sisters, as I prepare to close. I want you to know that what you are illusion. The world wants to enslave you to fear. The world wants us to bow down to its, its agenda. King Herod and his soldiers represents the world and its agenda. The world who's trying to destroy the church and keep the church bound in chains. They want you to compromise and be conformed to this world, to this kingdom. And the plan is to, to, to do it by fear and control. For, for someone who don't know the Lord and someone who has not a relationship with him, they always depended on themselves or somebody else. Uh, Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But, but how many know that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. People of God, I want to encourage you today to stand up to the enemy in the name of Jesus. Yes. We are overcomers. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So don't let what you see determine what you believe. Don't let what you see determine your faith. Amen. Amen. So we are to walk by faith and not by sight. When you call on the name of the Lord, may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Yes. I believe in the power of God and, and know that he still works miracles today. I believe in the power of God. I know that he, he still answers prayers today. That thing that you've been waiting on, that thing that you've been praying for, whatever's been bothering you, been hindering you, we command it to go in the name of Jesus. Yes. We know that he's able to deliver his people to set you free. His blood came and cleansed us all and made us all righteousness. Amen. I, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for doing what you do, oh God, in our lives, oh God. Somebody say you ain't seen nothing yet.
People of God, I just hope today that you have been blessed by this message. And I want to encourage you that this world won't get any easier. But if we stay covered in the blood of Jesus, we know that we are healed. We know that we are set free. We know that we are delivered. So don't let this world and, and, and the, the tricks of the enemy uh, place you in a, a, a bondage of, of fear. And, 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 and we just know that we have to stay in his presence under his covenant. We know that we have to stay uh, prayed up. We have to believe in God's power and that he would do that what he said he would do. Now, I know uh, sometimes we look around and things just don't look right. And I know sometimes every time you turn around, you are being bothered. And because we know that the times are, are near and we know that we ain't seen nothing yet because our Lord and Savior, when he come back to, to, to rapture his people, we won't have to worry about this old uh, barren, barren land. But we are just strangers passing through. Amen. Yeah. I thank you all for watching.